Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Crash Course Studio. Welcome to the show. So, we almost got through a full spoiler season without a massive dump of leaks, and uh, it happened kind of at the 11th hour. So, right at the end of the actual spoiler season for Bloomborough, right before the Commander Precon spoilers happened, we've got a ton of spoilers to go through. So, and I, I said spoilers. Leaks. These are not officially confirmed, so they are not yet official. We'll probably find out today if these are official or not. They look really legitimate, so let's jump into them. Again, take everything I say on this episode with a grain of salt because uh, these very well could be fakes. Very, very impressive fakes, but fakes. So, yeah, if I say like, hey, this could be a really cool commander and this card work really well with it. Maybe wait until it's official to decide if you're going to pick up some cards for it. Anyways, let's move on. Murmuration. Also, apologies for any mispronunciations, and some of the cards are a little bit grainy, but we'll do our best, okay? Enchantment for five mana in white. Bird you control, get plus one, plus one, and have vigilance at the beginning of your end step for each spell you've cast this turn. Create a one, two creature token with flying name Storm Crow. Really interesting that this is in white. Um, that seems very, very powerful. I mean, maybe it's in white because, like, Storm decks are typically not in white at all. Like, they typically are in blue, red. That's usually what Storm decks are. That being said, I mean, this in a Kai Kar deck seems quite good when you're just like, spell, 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 spell. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, okay, cool, I got a ton of, again, one, two flyers named Storm Crow, but they're actually, again, two threes with Vigilance because of this enchantment in play. So this obviously could be very good in, well, Bird Tribal. And of course, I mean, just literally any kind of a deck that's going to be casting an absurd number of spells on their turn as well so yeah definitely keep that in mind yeah i mean like artifacts like an artifact um i like my joy redact but i guess i mean i'm trying to think of an artifact storm deck i'm sure there's artifact storm decks that include white as well and again spell slinger in white not as typical but uh, you might find that next up we've got moonstone uologist a 4-4 bat warlock for five mana in black flying Whenever a creature to poke controls dies, you create a blood token. Nice. Whenever you sacrifice an artifact, put a counter on Moonstone Yaldris, and you gain one life. So that's quite good, actually. I mean, blood tokens are kind of laughed at compared to some other tokens. Like, when it comes to, like, their actual value, I think wizards, like, overestimated their value in the very first set when they made them. It's not like a treasure token, obviously, but it's still quite good. I mean, I think, again, I believe it's like you sacrifice. I believe you, is it draw, then discard, or discard, then draw? I can never remember that one. But either way, it is card selection, not card advantage. That being said, being able to select is quite nice. And on top of that, this gains you life and gets counters on it whenever you do so. And it also counts when you're sacrificing any other artifacts too, which of course include, well, treasures. So this could see play, obviously, in any kind of a deck that's looking to wipe out your opponent's creatures quite a bit. I mean, Aristocrat-style decks, potentially, where you have maybe, like, Dictative Erebos or something like that and play where you sacrifice creature. Cool, I'm forced my opponent to sacrifice their things, and I get artifacts, and, and I can use, like, these kind of myriad master synergies and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, a sacrifice-heavy deck, I could see. A control strategy, I could see. And also, one that utilizes, again, other types of artifacts that want to be sacrificed, like clue tokens, food tokens, treasure tokens, etc., etc. Next up. Agate Instigator, a 1-3 Lizard Rogue for 2 mana in red. Offspring for 1 in a red. Whenever another creature control enters, this creature deals 1 damage to each opponent. This is basically impact tremors on a creature that can be double impact tremors by offspringing it. Is that the phrase? Be kicking it with the offspring, basically. So being able to... <laughs> the band offspring. Um, yeah, being able to get a second copy of this in play is quite nice. Then you basically have build your own Perforos, right? Because Perforos is... Creature ETBs, two damage each opponent. This is pretty huge. This is going to see, I believe, a ton of play. Sure, a rogue deck could consider it. I guess a lizard deck, but more so, it's more so... Yeah, do you have, like, impact tremors in your deck? Those kinds of cards? Yeah, you're going to want this. It's also quite a good card for, like, a brutoclad type strategy where... Again, you've got that Offspring token, which is basically an exact copy of this, except it's a 1-1. You don't really care that it's a 1-1. And it's all of a sudden you can just, like, get that token uh, to become all your other tokens or a Populate strategy. This can get really, really, really out of hand. So that seems like a very, very, very good card that can see a good amount of play. Again, Impact Terminus is quite popular. Next up, 
Echoing Assault. Adorable. The art in this set is just adorable. Enchantment for five mana in red. Creature tokens you control have menace. Arr, I'm so scary. Uh, whenever you attack a player, choose target non-token creature that's attacking that player. Create a token that's a copy of that creature. Except it's a 1-1. One, one. The token enters tap, then attacking that player. Sacrifice, we get an extend step. Um, yeah, that seems quite good. Really good for certain strategies out there. First up, okay, it's only a 1-1. One, one. That typically doesn't matter all that much when you're trying to use an abuse a card like this because you're trying to look for cards that are like, oh, okay, I've got a great ETB or a great LTB. Fantastic. I mean, if I attack someone with, say, a Mold Drifter, then I make a copy of the Mold Drifter. Cool, I get to draw two cards. Good for me. It doesn't matter that I'm sacrificed to get the end step. Um, also, you know, ones that, again, have even better ETBs. Um, I mean, not better ETBs necessarily, but, like, let's say you need to remove, like, Acidic Slime or those kinds of things. There are some massive ETBs that you can abuse with this. And also keep in mind, of course, that token, again, can be easier to copy for certain decks out there. Again, if you've got, like, Populate. If you've got Populate, you can make a token copy of that token, which then will stick around. That does not have to be sacrificed in its end step, so keep that in mind. Yeah, so this seems pretty good. Again, giving your creature tokens menace. So this could definitely see play in a token-heavy strategy because giving your creature tokens menace is quite nice. But also, yeah, if you've got a bunch of, again, I would say ETBs, but also LTBs, leave battlefield triggers, consider this too. Moving on, Jacked Rabbit. Maybe the best name of a magic card ever. That's hilarious. A 1-2 Rabbit Warrior with Ravenous for X, 1, and a white. Whenever it attacks, create a number of 1-1 white rabbit creature tokens equal to its power. I probably should have looked up what Ravenous was before this. I actually, I didn't, I didn't look up through these cards. One second, pausing, and we're back. Uh, yeah, no wonder I didn't remember it. That was from Warhammer. I mean, I feel like they would have put like the reminder text on this one, but uh, if X is five or more, you draw a card. It enters with that many counters on it too. So, uh, yeah, that seems quite powerful. It's basically like a Hydra kind of mechanic-ish, where you're getting a lot of counters on this, getting a lot of. I mean, 1-1 uh, one, one Rabbits when this attacks as well. And also, I mean, the card draw is nice once you get to it as well. But, um, yeah, and a token type strategy and a big mana type strategy and an expel tribal type strategy. This could be very, very good. I guess extra combats as well could be good with as well. Moving on, the odd Acorn Gang. This looks to be the backup for the Golgari deck, the backup commander. 5-5 five, five, Squirrel Warrior for 5 mana in Golgari, Menace, Trample, and Reach. Squirrels you control have tap target. Squirrel gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample ton of turn. Activate only sorcery. Whenever one of our squirrels you control, deal combination to player, draw a card. I mean, this one just seems like a slam dunk in a Chatterfang deck. Because, I mean, at the very least, you're drawing a bunch of cards, essentially, with this. It is one or more, so keep that in mind. It is going to be at the most, you know, basically, with each, if you have three opponents, three cards in a turn. But that's still amazing. On top of that, I guess, with the most, if you have, like, extra combats which you probably won't in these colors if you have you know double strike which you again usually won't in these colors either that could be extra cards as well that being said being able to pump your creatures could be quite nice this having menace trample and reach it didn't really i don't know if it needed trample because like again your squirrels that can tap can give this trample but yeah menace is really nice you want to swing maybe get through an opponent and pump this a ton to take players out I mean, uh, if you had, let's say, Fire Shrieker, which, again, you're kind of benefited to lean into Double Strike a little bit when you can. Being able to give this Double Strike, if you pump it with three squirrels, it's a one-shot KO if it gets through. So keep that in mind. This one, I don't think, well, I don't think that this one's going to, like, take over from the actual commander of that, Hazel. Hazel, already episode on that one. Make sure you check that one out. But Hazel seems like, okay, like, big man up, fun times. And this one is more like, oh, okay, cool, utilize your squirrels for pump effects. Only sorcery speed. Again, wizards, lame. Um, I understand sometimes when they use sorcery speed. I don't understand it when it's like, we don't want combat tricks. Uh, but yeah, I think this one's pretty interesting. It can definitely go great in a scroll travel deck already like Chatterfang. And when it comes to it being a commander itself, we'll see how popular it's going to be. I don't think it's going to outpace Chatterfang and, and definitely not Chatterfang. And I don't think it'll outpace Hazel either. Moving on. Wild Seer Scoring Maw. Unsure what the mana value is, though it is a Golgari commander. It looks like 6-6 six, six, Elemental Wolf. I'm going to guess three and uh, Golgari colors, red, uh, green. Trample, Enchantment Spells you cast from your hand, have Cascade. Maybe it's six mana. Interesting. So we are getting a Golgari Enchantment Cascade commander. That is spicy. Uh, Yeah, I like that a lot. 
there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this one. I mean, obviously, you can just take a bunch of really cool enchantments. Like, I'm thinking, like, Sandworm Convergence. You know, that's eight mana, I believe. That's a lot of value. Basically, you can't be attacked by Flyers. You get a 5-5 five, five Worm at your end step. And, yeah, just chuck a bunch of really fun giant enchantments into your deck and just cascade into other ones. So, that could definitely be a direction that you go. Keep in mind, like, with enchantments, too, you are in green with enchantments. So, you have enchantments that can enchant lands and just help you ramp, too. So, this could be, like, you know, ramping with it as well. But also, you could do some, uh, you know, weird things like I like to do in decks with, uh, you know, like a one mana enchantment, maybe like a wild growth. You cast that, and then you only have like one card in your deck that costs zero, which is, oh, I don't know, you know, maybe something that allows everyone to just toss their entire hand into play, which I've already built the deck around. So, yeah, quite fun. Yeah, any of those kind of like zero mana, like usually suspend cards, essentially. You could utilize them with a commander like this. So there's some very interesting things that you can do. Like you can definitely do Enchantress. You can definitely do Cascade. Cast things from Exile benefits. Or yeah, a weird deck where you just try to cast a zero mana spell for funsies. And uh, you could do like really heavy ramp with this too. So yeah, a very cool commander. We shall see how popular this one is. Next up, Tempt with Bunnies. That is hilarious. Sorcery for three mana in white. Tempting off or draw a card and create a 1-1 one, one white rabbit creature token. Each opponent may draw a card and create a 1-1 one, one ra white rabbit creature token. For each opponent who does, you draw a card and create a 1-1 white, one, one, one white rabbit creature token. So, at the least, this is no opponent except the tempting offer. You draw one card and make a 1-1 one, one bunny, which is pretty terrible at sorcery speed for three mana. That being said, at its best, if every single one of your opponents does it, that is you make four bunnies and you draw four cards for three mana. That's really good. Uh, and also, you are benefiting your opponents. Like, I could definitely see this one in, like, a group hug type strategy-ish. And one that can politic really well. But, again, if you're not good at politicking, and if you're not, like, a full group hug build, you're not just going to chuck this into a random deck and be like, it's going to draw me a lot of cards and I'm going to make a lot of tokens. No, it probably won't do that usually. So, keep that in mind. Interesting card, though, and really fun. Next up, Prosperous Bandit, a 2-2 Raccoon Rogue. For three minute and red offspring one my friend's got a girlfriend uh, um yeah they uh, uh offspring no no anyone okay yeah the band first strike uh whenever this creature deals comedy to a player create that many tap treasure tokens okay do we need that um yeah so more treasure token creation this one is dependent luckily on this being you know a 2-2 creature instead of like a 7-7 dragon that also gives all your other creatures, like, you know, the exact same thing. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yes, having to get through an opponent, like if, it, if this can just keep getting through early on, like, that can be great. Like, two treasures each time, and if you offspring this, you know, getting the other one through. And of course, this would work well in a deck where you have a bunch of pump effects, where you can just, like, make this hit incredibly hard, make a ton of treasures. You gotta be able to get this through, too. Maybe a rogue-type strategy as well, because usually those have ways to get creatures through, or just very evasive creatures. Interesting. It's a very interesting card, because, again, like... There isn't any inherent value to it unless you're able to connect and it has no way to connect like on its own unless an opponent literally has no blockers or is unwilling to block because it does have first strike so keep that in mind interesting moving on rolling hamsphere hamsphere <laughs> fun a 4-4 four, four vehicle for seven man of crew three plus plus one for each hamster you control when it attacks create three one one red hamster creature tokens and it deals x damage any target x number of hamsters you control that's pretty funny so basically the more and more this attacks, the more and more hamsters you build up, and the more and more damage you're dishing out each time. This obviously could work well in a vehicle deck. This could work well in, say, a... I don't know. Like, um, I guess an extra combat set could be great, because it is an attack trigger. Ones that can double up attack triggers. So, yeah, being able to just go more and more and more hamsters. Obviously, I mean, it gets more and more hard to deal with and deals up more and more damage. So that could be quite nice as well. It's a very interesting card. Quite expensive uh, at 7 mana, but still, like... Well, the first time you attack, you're going to be a 7-7, seven, seven, dealing out 3 damage, and also making hamsters. So yeah, this could be removal, this could be game ending, it's quite cool. Uh, yeah, cool. Moving on, I guess uh, Changeling Tribal could work as well. Sword of the Squeak, funny, Sword of the Meek is the reference card. Equipment for 2, equip 2, Cool creature gets plus 1 for each creature control, base power toughness 1-1. One, one. Whenever a hamster, mouse, rat, or squirrel you control enters, you may attach Sword of the Squeak to its creature. Uh, yeah, that's quite spicy. I mean, that is a free attach to specific things, those or changelings. But, uh, yeah, if you've got, like, low to the ground creature deck, like, your base power 1-1. One, one, it is base power. Okay, so, like, even if you have, like, anthems in play, it's fine. Their 1-1 one, one still count. 
so yeah like base tribal decks uh, i'm trying to think of the it's like queen something since lesnia there are certain commanders out there that really care about like one ones so there you go utilize in something like that or if you just have a bunch of one ones or if you have like mass token producers where you just have again you're making like 100 soldiers maybe not 100 but like even like 20 soldiers or whatever cool attaches to your commander commander is a one shot ko even if you can't attach it for free two does not cost a lot to attach so yeah, if you've got a bunch of one ones or a bunch of ways to make one ones definitely consider this card it's a very cool one next up calamity of cinders sorcery for seven mana in red convoke deal six damage to each untapped creature interesting so this could be a one-sided board wipe quite easily i mean six isn't six isn't the most it's not blast exact right but six is usually like the highest amount of toughness typically on the board so being able to just convoke and you're benefited to convoke with all your creatures or just like you know go to combat attack with certain creatures and then your second main phase convoke the rest of your creatures cast this and all of a sudden your opponent's creatures are wiped out and yours are fine this is a very interesting card so like if you have a go wide strategy if you have a token strategy i would definitely consider this one because yeah again you can definitely save your team and wipe out your opponent's teams i mean there's better like one-sided board wipes out there of course or better more flexible board wipes too that being said like if you're in mono red or you know a red and something else that doesn't really have too many <laughs> removals uh yeah make sure you consider this next up uh perch protection an instant for six mana in white gift an extra turn oh my gosh they printed that okay um okay instant this is gonna cause some problems create four two two bluebird creature tokens of flying if the gift was promised all permanents you control phase out until your next turn your life total can't change you can't protect from everything exile it okay um yeah that's that's gonna cause some issues at tables uh this could just be i mean not king making but you're just like okay nah, you get an extra turn i mean you taking an extra turn can make people salty but you being like well i could give it to you but i'm giving it to billy instead yeah oh okay yeah i mean the funny it's probably it's in a group hug deck too i think right so that's hilarious um yeah i mean it's kind of like a teferi's you know protection kind of thing you're just like sitting back and not doing anything for a little bit but you just made four two twos so with flying which is nice i guess a token deck could consider it giving an extra turn like even though you're like just sitting there doing nothing that is also like a downside to you though because that player that you gave the extra turn to is really speeding ahead of other players with that extra turn i mean oh my gosh what a weird card okay um yeah it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of decks want to play this I mean obviously like if one player is like really far behind you can like really help them out with this in a way it's it's not like king making but it kind of kind of is moving on insatiable uh frugivore whatever that is a two four bat berserker one that eats fruit okay there you go that's a strawberry i guess <laughs> i thought it was blood it's a strawberry magic two four rat berserker for four mana in black whenever it enters create a food token then you may exile three cards from your graveyard if you do repeat the process huh <laughs> uh four four mana and black sacrifice x foods creature you control get plus x plus zero and gain minutes all turn interesting so interesting i mean if you have your entire library in your graveyard you could do this a lot of times 20 or so i'm sure there's some kind of like a weird combo with it that would stop at a certain point but yeah like when you create a token you get to do this or mill yourself or whatnot sacrifice a token mill this uh yeah and being able to kind of be a finisher too I think this is more so probably just for like decks that already have established food i don't know if you're going to be like oh okay like self mill deck a self mill deck could consider this uh but usually you want access to your graveyard you're self milling to so it's an interesting card for sure but yeah a interesting finisher for those decks too moving on evercoat ursine a six five elemental bear with trample hideaway three hideaway three for five mana in green reminder hideaway is I, I believe it would be look at the top three cards your library take one of them essentially exile it and you can cast it when you meet a certain requirement for free you get to highway three twice and put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your library in a random order because wizards is lame and change that rule because they're lame used to be just you know any order but sorry uh, uh cranko decks grenzo decks uh anyways whenever evercoat earth sign deals come to player if there are cards exile with it you may play one of them up paying its mana cost interesting so yeah i mean this one is casting things from exile it's casting for free lower the ground ones it's got trample it's a decently powerful creature so 
Yeah, I mean, it's a value card. It's a value-based card for five mana. You're getting potentially, I mean, an extra six mana value in total, you know, for free. So that's quite good. It's quite good. It's a good card. That's funny these days. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's like a 6-5 for five with Trample back in the day. It was like, my goodness, what's the downside? And these days it's like, it doesn't do enough upside. It does a lot. This does a lot. It's like, what kind of decks specifically want it? Ones that want to play from Exile, maybe one that, ones that want extra value. Ones that want to be able to trample damage through. Maybe a pump deck, maybe a Power Matters deck. Moving on. Polywog Prodigy, a 1-3 Frog Wizard. Looks like for one in a blue with Evolve. So whenever a creature that's bigger in power or toughness under your control comes into play, it gets a counter on it. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell of mana value less than Polywog Prodigy's power, draw a card. Wow. Okay. So this is kind of like... Um, oh my goodness, what's the card's name? Why is this escaping me? Esper Sentinel. No. Es whatever the Esper one is. Goodness gracious. The one that costs a single white mana. Is Esper Sentinel? Whatever the Esper one is. But basically, you are trying to get this power up higher and higher and higher because whenever your opponents cast spells, you're going to be drawing a good amount of cards. It is, again, less. Not less than or equal. So like unless they're casting a zero, which, yes, is a thing then sure but most of the time yeah that's not going to hit that so the more this evolves the more counters this gets the more power this gets the more times you're just going to be drawing a ton of cards off a of non-creature spell so if you can get this out early and get a lot of counters on this or pump in other ways this can draw you an absurd amount of cards so for the right strategy out there again counters decks that you know maybe have proliferate maybe decks that just have you know anthems you can draw a ton of cards with this so quite interesting next up Steelbird Champion, a 1-1 Mouse Soldier for 3 mana in white with Offspring for 1 and a white Vigilance. An opponent, Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, put a counter on this creature. Interesting. So, kind of like uh, Sunscorch Region. Is that the one? Uh, but basically being able to... Or Torian Muller. Except for specifically for non-creature spells, not just any spell they cast. That being said, it is Vigilant. And it's interesting that literally this, the, the Offspring is the exact same card because the Offspring is just a 1-1. This is just a 1-1. Literally the exact same card, just a token version of it. So being able to, for five mana, get like two of these that it can just grow very quickly throughout the game whenever opponent's casting non-creature spells, that's quite nice. So for a counters matter strategy, for a, I mean, just go wide strategy potentially, could utilize it too. It is two bodies. It is five mana for that though, but still like you're going pretty high. So um, yeah, interesting. Interesting. You can be able to hit pretty hard with this. Next up. Pyre Swipe Hawk, a 4 4 elemental bird for 5 mana in red with flying and haste. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus X plus 0 until the turn. X is the greatest mana value among artifacts you control. Whenever you expend 6, gain control of up to 1 target artifact for as long as you control Pyre Swipe Hawk. Again, uh, expend 6 means that whenever you're casting like a total mana value of 6 in your turn with mana from your. Uh, whenever you spend mana to do that, I guess. <laughs> whenever you spend 6 mana, then you get that effect. So being able to steal artifacts of this can be quite nice. And of course, if you have high mana value artifacts this can hit for a ton i mean i'm, I'm thinking about decks that kind of run like spine of Ishsa and that kind of stuff as well maybe like bosh decks that want to chuck artifacts uh that other you know one the iron eater or whatever one that we just got in rakdos that also chucks artifacts that actually wants like high mana value artifacts could consider these so yeah or maybe some affinity decks too next up blood root apothecary a 3-3 squirrel druid with toxic two for three mana in green so when it hits an opponent they get two poison counters enters you and target opponent each great treasure token nice for you and that opponent whenever opponent sacrifice a non-creature token that player gets two poison count oh my gosh ha okay um I mean, I don't, I don't like giving the treasure tokens out. I like punishing the treasure tokens. So, yeah, that seems quite good. Being able to, I mean, it only takes five. Five poison, or, you know, five times that this actually triggers to actually give out enough poison counters to take out an opponent, which is quite spicy. You can only take even one, I guess, if you have a proliferate deck. So, a proliferate deck could consider this. A Obviously, a toxic, a poison, a infect deck could consider it. Yeah, I mean, or also a deck that actually can force sacrifice of just non-creatures just non -creatures as well. Like, if you can force sacrifice of non-creature permanence, you can just one-shot players with this. This seems fun, good, and interesting. Yeah, definitely consider it. Moving on. Communal Brewing. An enchantment that is really hard to read, but let's get there. For two and a green. When it enters any number of target opponents, each draw a card. Put an ingredient counter on Communal Brewing. Then you... Put, then put an ingredient counter on it for each card drawn this way. There we go. 
When you, whenever you cast a creature spell that a creature enters with X initial counters on it, wrecks a number of ingredient counters on communal brewing. Wow. Okay. So yeah, this could definitely see play in. Interesting. This could definitely see play in, I guess, counters decks. And, and also again, it is counters so like proliferate decks too. Yeah. This seems pretty good. I mean, any number of target opponents you draw a card. So again, you can just like have three players draw a card, and then this gets. I mean, it would have four counters on it, right? So you can have those creatures enter with four counters quite a bit. That can be quite large. Uh, yeah, seems pretty good in those kinds of decks. You are giving up something, and it's like a bit group huggy too. So like, it could be group hug as well. But also just, hey, if you've got proliferate effects, your creatures can get absolutely massive in no time. Next up, 20 Toad ta to Toad Toad. There was going to say Tog. I don't know why. 20 Toad Toad. A 3-3 three, three Frog Wizard for four mana in blue. Your maximum hand size is 20. Nice. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures, put a counter on 20 Toad Toad and draw a card. Whenever 20 Toad Toad attacks, you win the game if there are 20 or more counters on it or if you have 20 or more cards in hand. Wow. Okay. Um, I did not expect to see an alternative win condition, but apparently we've got one. Maximum hand size is 20. That's more than enough to ever i mean there's some players like that's not enough i need to discard it i don't like it yeah uh but and it is an attack trigger to win the game it is not like wait till your upkeep and then if this condition's meant you win an attack trigger can be a bit easier to do and easier to protect on your turn yeah interesting um wow i mean that's just a good amount of value throughout the game too getting to draw a card and getting counters on this just when two creatures attack uh, I mean, if you're looking for a card that can give you no maximum hand size and also an alternative win condition, go for it. I would say that. Oh, I mean, also getting 20 more counters on that's quite easy for certain commanders out there, like Azuri. You can get a ton of counters on it's quite quickly. Proliferate strategies can also win in that way, too. So this gives you like two angles to win. Again, it is or. Or. So it's like you don't have to have both. You have 20 more counters on this or 20 or more cards in hand. So yeah. You can win quite easily with this in the right deck setup. So proliferate. Card, mass card draw. Yeah, go for it. Moving on. Hazel's Brewmaster, a 3 4 Squirrel Warlock with Menace for 4 mana in black. Whenever it enters or attacks, eggs up to one target card from a graveyard and create a food token. Food, you control, have all activated abilities of all creature cards. Eggs out with Hazel's Brewmaster. Nice. Wow. Okay, that seems powerful. In the right strategy. Obviously, if you have a food strategy out there, definitely consider this one. Because essentially, and it's card from a graveyard, not just. Not just your graveyard. So again, if like one person has a mana dork, all of a sudden all your food are going to be mana rocks, which is great. Or you know if they have activated abilities, those are gonna be quite nice too. So yeah, this seems quite good again for food strategy specifically. I don't know if I just consider it on its own. Like it is evasive. You can just like throw in a deck, exile some creatures, make some food, and then get some things out of it. Maybe if you really care about like sacrificing artifacts and that kind of stuff too. But uh yeah, I would say more so for like a food strategy, it is a really cool card. Next up. Arthur Marigold Knight. This one appears to be the Jeskai backup commander. A 4-5 Mouse Knight with haste that costs 5 mana and Jeskai. It's also hard to read, so my apologies. Whenever Arthur and at least one other creature attack, look at the top something six cards of your library, maybe? You may put a creature card, uh, and then the rest is battlefield tapped and attacking from among them. There we go. On the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, return that creature to its owner's hand at the end of combat. I think I got there for the most part. Maybe? Goodness gracious. Okay. So basically, getting things off the top of your library for free and having them tap and attacking, that's quite nice. Um, yeah, that seems quite easy for you to get. And a creature heavy base strategy in Jeskai seems interesting. If you've got ways to manipulate the top of your deck, which there are plenty of ways to do so, you can know kind of what's on top. You can get certain things on top, and you can... Yeah, I mean, if you just like, what's the one where you just like tutor something, uh, tutor an artifact from your library on top, you're like, okay, Blight Seal, cool, yeah, swings at someone. Yeah, this seems pretty good. This seems pretty good. And also, you aren't red, so like extra combats are definitely a thing. If you can get a lot of extra combats with this, that's a lot of extra uh, value. And again, as a return to the end of combat, uh, I there probably are ways, are there ways around that, you know, with like, um, are there ways around that with like uh, Sundial of the Infinite? Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, it seems interesting. So this one is so hard to read. Next up. Octomancer, a 3-3 Frog Druid for 5 mana in Simic. Gift an octopus. That's hilarious. It's an 8-8 octopus. So again, we have like gift a fish. Here's a tiny little fish. That's nothing. Now you're giving someone an 8-8 octopus. That's pretty huge. At the beginning of each end step, creating tokens, copy of target creature token that enter the battlefield this turn. Interesting. I like that. I like that a lot. 
Uh, I wish that was like on a commander. So that's really cool. Being able to make an extra token that's a copy of a creature token that entered. It could be anyone's, obviously. So like with the first one, you're like, okay, I give you an octopus. I'm going to be getting an octopus too. Let's be friends, all right? Cool. Uh, but then on each person's turn, if they're making creature tokens, you get creature tokens of you know their copies. If you can instant speed make tokens too, that'd be good too. Yeah, in a Simic deck that's like looking to make creature tokens, uh, like my Gigantha deck, I guess it's a five color, but still like, it's looking to make creature token copies of creatures. This can be incredibly powerful. So yeah, again, every single one of this happening, quite nice. I love gifting an octopus. That's great. Next up, Scurry of Squirrels. And with that one, you can really like, really politic. Be like, who wants an 8-8? And everyone's going to be like, me, 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 me. Uh, Scurry of Squirrels, speaking of me, 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 me. Uh, two, two, Squirrel Scout. Myriad, Myriad for three mana in green. Whatever deals come to a player, put count a counter on it and target creature you control. A counter on target creature you control. Uh, Myriad, Myriad. That's interesting. So when you swing with this, you're getting two more copies attacking the other opponents, and then you're getting two more copies again attacking the other opponents. That's sweet. Is this the first time we've seen Myriad, Myriad? I believe. I believe we haven't seen two Myriads before. Really cool. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of tokens to be going out as well. If this is getting through, definitely could see playing a squirrel deck. Could also see play just in an aristocrat style deck because you swing. All of a sudden, you've got like four extra copies of this in total, and then you can just sacrifice those tokens to whatever aristocrat style value you want. You can also see play in a counter strategy too. Interesting. Interesting. Moving on. Swarm Yard Massacre. Sorcerer for five mana in black. Create two 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens. Then each creature that is an insect rat sp squirrel, spider or squirrel gets minus one, minus one till I've turned for each creature you control that's an insect rat spider or squirrel. Um, if you have any of those types of tribal decks out there, which insect, decently popular. Rat, I mean, popular for like relentless rats and those kinds. And I guess we just got like a rat commander as well. Spider decks. Yeah, I mean, with... Um, What's its name? Ah, Lord of the Rings spider thing. And then squirrels, obviously Chatterfang and others now too. Yeah, you have a decent amount of options. So this can be a one-sided board wipe quite easily. Quite good. Moving on. Real cast apprenticeship, a sorcerer, four mana in green. Here we go, it's hard to read. Choose three, choose the same mode. You may choose the same mode more than once. Two counters on target creature. Create a token's copy of target token you control. Target player creates a 1-1 one, one squirrel creature token. Target opponent sacrifices a non-token artifact. Interesting. So all good? I mean, all good options, I'd say. Like, if you're doing like, okay, four mana to make three squirrels, not all that great. Four mana to make an opponent sacrifice four non-token, or three non-token artifacts, that seems quite good. Copying a token you control three times can be really, really good, depending on what the token is. Again, if it's a creature token copy of another creature, it could be great. And two counters on a creature for four mana three times is, is decent as well. Six counters. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it could be pretty flexible if you, if you have a token strategy, if you've got a counter strategy, or if you just need something to sacrifice, or you just want like a combination of those. It's a flexible card. It's quite nice. Moving on. Bright Cap Badger, a 3-4 Badger Druid for four mana in green. Looks like an Adventure Frolic for three mana. Instant speed, two and a green. Create two, one, one. Um, I don't know. Badger creature tokens, some sapling creature tokens. There we go. Uh, each fungus and sapling you control has tap at green. At beginning of your end step, create a one one green sapling creature token. Interesting. If you've got saplings or fungus, this is a slam dunk in your deck because it turns all of them into mana dorks. If not, you're probably not going to utilize this. There you go. I mean, like maybe creature token production because like you can cast a spell, get two tokens, play it, and again on your end step, you're always getting one, and that's a mana dork as well. So it could be quite nice. Yeah, could be for just token decks, too. Moving on. Trail Tracker Scout. Not sure about the mana value. I'm sure it's in green. I'm going to guess one in a green. It's a 1-3 Raccoon Scout. It's definitely not just a single green mana. It better not be, because that's like bop. <laughs> Tap at one of any color. Whenever you expend eight, return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. I'm going to guess just it has... it. If I, I would put 99% sure that it is actually just, you know, one in a green. Okay? So a mana dork, low the ground. That being said, uh, later in the game, I'm expending eight, uh, getting a permanent figure over to your hand. That can be quite nice, just like for free. Nice. Yeah, for like a big mana deck, this could definitely see a good amount of play like as a mana source for it because it's also decisional value later. Yeah, it's got a lot to compete with with like other mana dorks these days at two mana that tap for one of any color that do a lot of different things. But for those decks out there, being able to get something back is quite nice. Keep in mind, it is just permanence, but still, that's usually what you want in green anyways. Next up, Thickest in the Thicket. <laughs> just a bunch of 
Squirrels that are working out. And mice, I guess. Enchantment for five mana in green. When thickest in a thicket enters, put X counters on target creature. X is that creature's power. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. At the beginning of your end step, draw two cards if you control the creature with the greatest power or tie with the greatest power. Interesting that's two. See, we have seen this before where it's like, I think it's on your upkeep uh, with Garrick or there's like a Garrick card that's an enchantment. At three, I believe that's like draw one. But uh, being able to, Garouk, whatever the name is, being able to draw, again, two cards with the greatest creature power or type of the greatest power, that's quite nice. And obviously, on ETB, this is probably going to make it so that you do have the biggest creature. Again, just being able to get X counters on it. So in a counter strategy, you, you want to consider this one because it's a lot of counters to be had on a creature right away. Or like if your commander is like already a you know, two shot KO or, you know, not a two shot KO. Most are not. I guess Yargle is. But um, Yargle and Watani. But basically, if you have a commander that is, you know, a three shot KO, this turns into a two shot KO. And then like double strike can very easily be one. Yeah. And a good amount of draw. So, yeah, I mean, basically, if you have big creatures, definitely consider this one. Lots of draw to be had with this. Moving on. Mr. Fox Glove. Fantastic Mr. Fox and Magic. A 3-5 Fox Rogue with lifelink for five mana in Bant. So, again, it looks like this is the... I think I've already been through the other ones, right? The other backup commanders. This is the last of the backup commanders, I believe. Uh, this is for the Bant deck. Uh, whenever it attacks, 3-5 lifelink, if I didn't say that. Whenever it attacks, draw cards equal the number of cards in defending player's hand minus the number of cards in your hand. If you didn't draw cards this way, you may put a creature card from your hand on the battlefield. Interesting. Very interesting. So this is like that one Sphinx uh, artifact that costs seven. When it ETBs, you kind of draw equal to the difference. That's quite powerful. So like, I can definitely see this one seeing a good amount of play. This one is like, okay, you can do like hand manipulation things. Like if you've got ways to like freely discard cards, like I you lose influence or whatever. Is that one? I think that's the one where you can just like discard and make bears. If you have ways to discard cards quite easily, this can be really good to be like, okay, I don't like the cards in my hand. I'm just going to swing at an opponent. They've got seven in their hand. Draw the difference. I mean, even just not even manipulating your hand, being like, okay, that player's at seven. I'm at four. Attack, draw three. Yeah, sign me up for that. But also, and again, you can choose who you're attacking. Like, you want to attack so this is safe, but you're probably just going to, you know, put something on it where it's like unblockable or whatnot or give it flying. So swing at the player that you can, but yeah, usually you can swing at any player with this. And then other times when you're like, okay, like I would like to draw some cards, but I've got like a Blight Seal Colossus in my hand. I'll just cheat that into play. So yeah, basically this seems like a hand manipulation slash giant creature slash get creatures through type of a commander, which I think can be pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty popular. Uh, it's in some good colors. So yeah, that's quite spicy. Nice. Next up, Sazacap's Brew. Instant for two mana in red. Gift a tap fish. There's the fish again. No more octopus for you. That'd be hilarious if it was an octopus at eight mana or two mana. But anyways, this cost cast spell. Discard a card. Target player draws two cards. If the gift was promised, our creatures, a uh, target creature control gets plus zero until end turn. Interesting. I mean, you're most likely going to choose yourself every single time with this one. Why would you not draw the two cards? Like, why would you be like, okay, I discard a card. I give you a fish. You draw two cards. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, discard one, draw two is typically what we're seeing at this anyways, but also be able to gift a tap fish to, you know, pump a creature slightly. Nice. So if you're considering those types of cards, you know, discard one, draw two, in speed for two, you probably want to include this one as well, because you don't have to, you don't have to gift that fish. Okay. Moving on. Intrepid Rabbit, a 3-2 Rabbit Soldier for three mana in white. Offspring one, whenever, when this creature enters target creature control, gets plus one to turn. I guess I should mention... These look like they are actually commons and uncommons that we haven't seen yet from the main set. Uh, so these are included as well with the leaks. Um, so there you go. But they are also maybe included in the pre-cons as well, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so I'm not sure where these leaks came from, but they came on Reddit. So there you go. Uh, yeah, creature enters, target creature might plus plus one. That's not all that great. But again, like if you have like a popular strategy where you like, like those offspring tokens, great. Good for you. Heaped Harvest. Artifact food for three mana in green. When it enters and when you sacrifice, you may search life for a base land card, but when you're on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Interesting. So, I mean, this is inefficient mana ramp because, you know, it is three mana to get one, extra two. You know, uh, there are other ways to sacrifice, I guess I should say, but typically it'd be like five mana total to get two. It's probably more so for specific decks that really care about like food and sacrificing food. Next up, Dazzling Denial Instant for one in a blue. Counter target spells to control pays two if you control a bird unless they pay four instead. I mean, maybe if your commander is a bird specifically, I would consider this. Or if you have bird tribal. If not, probably not. Moving on. Oh, gosh, that's hard to read. A 1-1 lizard rogue. I'm not sure of the name. Costs a single black mana. 
Uh, creature can be blocked with two. It looks like Menace. Plus plus one till end of turn. Not sure. Maybe it's a bump effect. Uh, let's just skip that one. It's hard to read. Next up, Bone Bind Order. A 2 2 Squirrel Warlock Bard, because that's a thing. For two mana, multi classing. For two mana in black. Pay three in a black. Exile from your graveyard. Return another creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, I mean, specific decks, maybe. Like, just really care about getting things out of your graveyard or like milling yourself to get things out of your graveyard. Yeah, very specific. High Stride, instant for a single green mana. Target creature gets plus one, plus three, and gains reach left turn. Untap it. I mean, if you've got a commander, uh, what, Marwin? Uh, no, what, what's the one that uh, is in green that, like, you want to get extra counters on it with elves and whatever, and you uh, tap for a ton of mana based on its power? Whatever that is, whatever commanders want to tap based on power or, you know, number of cards drawn or all those things, you just pay a single green mana to untap it. This is an incredible card for those commanders. Outside of that, it's very specific. Moving on, Saver. Tar creature gets minus two, minus two, and 12 turn. Create a food token. Instant for two mana. It's probably more of a limited card. Next up, Dire Downdraft. Instant for four mana in blue. Costs one less to cast if it targets an attacking or tapped creature. Target creature's owner puts on top of the, or bottom of the library. It's a bit expensive still, even at three mana to do that. Uh, next up, Jolly Gerbils. I mean, expensive because the opponents would be like, I put it on top of my library. If it was on the bottom, be like, yeah, get rid of that. 2-3, Hamster Citizen for two mana in white. Whenever you gift... Uh, give a gift, draw a card. I guess if Gift Tribal becomes a thing, then sure. Uh, outside of that, yeah, it's it's very specific. Moving on. Three Tree Root Weaver, a 1-3 Mold Druid that costs one in a green, taps for one of any color. I mean, as I just said earlier, with the one that is most likely also the exact same cost, there are better dorks out there than this. Moving on. Sky Skipper Duo, a 3-3 three, three Bird Frog with flying for 5 mana in blue. When it enters, exile up to one other target creature control. Return to the battlefield. Aren't those controlled? Begin next end step. Interesting. I mean, just a nice little like blink effect. But uh, yeah, more for most, more so for specific decks. Uh, Dagger Fang Duo, it's hard to read. Like, it looks like 3 something Death Touch. Maybe 3-3 three, three Death Touch. Rat Squirrel for 3 mana in black. Uh, enters, you may... It's like mill something, maybe mill? I don't know. Swarm Yard Massacre. Already went through that. Not sure that should appear a second time. Rapid Augmenter. There we go. 1 3 Otter Artificer. That's hard to say. With haste for three mana. And is it? Whenever the creature you control at base power one enters, it gains haste still out of turn. Whenever the creature you control enters, if it wasn't cast, put a counter on it and it can't be blocked this turn. I mean, for a cheaty deck, I guess. I mean, I guess that counts. That also counts creature tokens. So, yeah, I guess a creature token type synergy could really utilize this because, again, low to the ground creatures for the most part. Yeah, that seems quite good. Next up, uh, we just have some extra versions of ones, I believe, that are going to be in some of the pre-cons. So you've got like a cool, like, I don't even know, if that, is that a badger for Garrick? Curse Huntsman? So there you go. Does the exact same thing as the regular. And Domri, apparently back as a, um, gosh, what's the one with the code? Porcupine. There you go. Unrecord Bullis. So there you go. There's that one as well. But now this episode is come to a close. Again, I want to remind you, these are leaks. They not are not official. They are not officially confirmed. We'll probably see them all officially confirmed today. So... Take everything I said in this episode with a grain of salt. That being said, if I had to give like, you know, percentage, it's 99.999% sure that these are probably real. So there you go. That being said, a lot of exciting cards on this episode. Let's, uh, let's see if any other ones are revealed today outside of these. So of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.